everyone, Terrible Dactyl here. Welcome back to Jurassic Plastic. I want to talk to you today about tripods. Dun dun dun! Look at this class. This is the most egregious example of a tripod in the entire Carnegie line, I think. This is the 1994 Platyosaurus from Safari's Carnegie Collection. And it is a tripod. Platyosaurus obviously is a bipedal animal. It is a basal sauropodomorph. It walked on two feet. It probably could not walk on four feet, unlike some older uh, depictions that showed it as a faculative quadruped. Um, so here it is on its two little feet with its tail on the ground. A 1994 dinosaur with a tail on the ground. Here is the 1993 Dilophosaurus. Notice its tail is touching the ground. Look at this. This is a 1994 Allosaurus. If it will stand up, you'll see that its tail is touching the ground. Unacceptable. Look at this. This is a 2007 Giganotosaurus. What is its tail touching? The ground. Here's a T-Rex. Tails on the ground. Dinosaurs didn't drag their tails. So these are inaccurate, right? Uh, no, I think, no, that's wrong. Uh, these, most of these are perfectly accurate. Well, maybe not perfectly, but in terms of their posture, they're fine. There's nothing wrong with a tripod. A tripod is necessary to get poses like this. This is one of my favorite poses. This is one of the dueling Dilophosaurs that it was sculpted in 1993. It was released at the very beginning of 1994. And... It needs to touch the ground. Look at that. How are you going to get this thing to stand up if the tail isn't touching the ground? Tripod poses are necessary to create interesting and dramatic poses in bipedal dinosaurs. This is not the same thing as tail dragging. I will point out that none of the Carnegie Collection dinosaurs, not a single one, not even the original 1988 dinosaurs drag their tails. This is the 1988 released Triceratops. Move out of the way there, guys. Look how high up off the ground that tail is. This tail comes out at such a straight angle, I would say it might be inaccurate based on the curvature around the hip in a real Triceratops fossil. They went out of their way in the late 80s to show dinosaurs as dynamic animals that did not walk around dragging their tails like big lizards. But some of the tails do touch the ground. Like our friend Platyosaurus here. Some of them it's just the very tip, like the T-Rex. Some of them it's more substantial, but they're within what the sculptor and the scientific consultants believed to be the range of motion for that animal. In a tripod, the tail is just used for stability. What you need to take a look at to assess accuracy is the angle at which the tail leaves the hips. The tail vertebrae articulate with the hip vertebrae uh, in an area called the sacrum, which would be right here. And in most dinosaurs, this first third of the tail that exits the sacrum is going to be the one that should be pretty much horizontal no matter what. And if we look at all of these examples, like the Giganotosaurus, straight. Don't look at the rest of the pose. Just look at the vertebral, vertebral column. It's straight. Take a look at the Allosaurus straight. Take a look at the Dilophosaurus. Um, well, it's a little bent, 
but I don't know if that degree of bending is necessarily out of the realm of possibility. I've certainly seen many depictions of dromaeosaurs with the base of their tail bent at a far more vertical angle than this. Would that be impossible? I don't know. Maybe. But I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility, especially for the early 90s. Even Platysaurus. It's got a pretty much straight base of the tail, and then it starts to curve up about a third to a half of the way down the tail. Now, would it have walked around like this, dragging its tail like a lizard? No. This is posed, rearing up, intimidating a rival, scaring away a predator. Something that it's doing that's dynamic. Tom Holtz, paleontologist, said, Animals move. We can't just depict animals in their osteologically neutral pose over and over again. And the floor in the Mesozoic, for most of the time, was not lava. If the tail touched the ground, it was not going to kill that dinosaur. It's not going to snap its vertebral column in half. They could bend. They could move. They could achieve poses that we probably would not necessarily be able to guess from just putting bare bones together and seeing how they click. You've got to take into account cartilage. You've got to take into account range of motion with different kinds of ball joints, different kinds of sockets, different kind of vertebral, vertebral articulation. Now, this platysaurus does have other issues. I'm not going to try and argue that this is 100% perfect. I think if somebody like Heinrich Mallison, who did a huge amount of study on platysaurus range of motion, were to look at this model, he would probably say, eh, no, quite a few things would be wrong with this. But I've read his paper, and from what I can gather, this tail would have been able to curl all the way around and not only touch itself at the base, but probably form a little bit of a curly cue if it really tried. Is that something that's, that's, that this animal would habitually do? Of course not. But could it achieve this pose? I'm not Heinrich Mallison, but, and please, if you are, or if you know more about this than I do, feel free to comment. But my understanding is that this pose is doable. I don't think this would be something that the animal would stand around doing. I think this wouldn't be comfortable, but could the animal achieve this pose in life? I believe so. I don't think the fact that the tail is touching the ground is inaccurate. I think this is a conceit to the fact that it needs to be stable and they want to show dynamic poses to illustrate the fact that dinosaurs were dynamic animals. And, I, you know, it especially bugs me when I see complaints where only like the very tip of the tail is touching the ground. Come on, that's not tail dragging. A tripod is something that these animals would have had to do on occasion. If you're a Tyrannosaurus Rex and you want to rear up to survey the landscape away from your normally horizontal position, you want to get a better view, you're going to tip yourself up. You're either going to bend at the knee or you're going to lean up at the hips. You're going to look around. What's going to happen to your tail? Are you going to break your tail at the base just to keep it from touching the ground like the floor is lava? No. It's going to rest on the ground. I want to illustrate the difference between a tripod or a tripodal stance and a tail dragging stance. This is an example of a model where the tail is dragging. This is obviously the Invicta Tyrannosaurus Rex. And you can see that the back is relatively diagonal. The tail is coming out of the hip at a straight line, but because the back is at a diagonal, it's angling towards the ground, and the very tip of the tail is shown dragging. It's got this sinuous curve at the end. It's got a little flat portion on the bottom of the mold. It's depicted in a walking posture. So this is a slight tail dragger. Now I have to point out that this model is even itself based on a mount of the original holotype specimen of Dynamosaurus that was mounted at the time these came out at the British Museum. 
Um, and that mount was done under the supervision of one of the scientists who pioneered the idea that dinosaurs would not drag their tails. And this was the first mount of T-Rex that was not in a fully upright kangaroo-like pose, but it's still dragging the tip of its tail. I don't think this pose is out of the realm of possibility. We know from footprints that this would not be a habitual pose because usually we don't see tail drag marks with footprints. Sometimes we do. So the floor was not lava. Sometimes dinosaurs did drag their tails. They probably would have tipped forward and kept the tail up. That has to do more with the way that the musculature here was working. Um, Andrea Cow has suggested that he suspects dinosaurs uh, may not have really been able to walk the way they did unless the tail was elevated. That doesn't mean they couldn't walk uncomfortably or awkwardly in positions if they were mired in mud or something else, or if they were rearing up to intimidate a rival. Uh, obviously, that, that does not involve walking at all um, without any trouble. Here's a Megalosaurus from the same Invicta line, and you can see it's in the same pose. The tail is dragging sinuously behind it. It's flat on the ground. You can see the flat portion here. But the vertebral column is still straight. It's just tipped upward more than we would usually depict that today. So tripods are not scientifically inaccurate. Theropods can and probably did get into this position frequently. The issue that I have with tripods is how ubiquitous they are in the Carnegie line. If you look at especially the later Carnegies, like towards the late 2000s, they were relying on the same pose over and over and over again. Tripodal stance, arms up, head facing one direction or another, and it just kind of homogenizes them. That, I think, is a fair critique of the whole tripod thing. You can go the other way and increase the size of the feet or warp the feet in some way in order to get them to stand horizontally like they did with the Albertosaurus and the Synraptor. Um, and they did in Wild Safari with things like the Tyrannus. Or you can go the route of giving it a base, which I personally wouldn't mind. I think a lot of the early Carnegies with bases are some of the nicest models in the line. I would have preferred to see more like that than the same tripod pose over and over again. So aesthetically, the tripod pose doesn't quite work after a while because you just get sick of it. But it's not scientifically inaccurate and it's not the same thing as dragging your tail. And even dragging the tail sometimes is not necessarily something that is physically impossible. It's hard to list something that's physically possible for an animal to do as being a scientific inaccuracy just because it's not their normal mode of locomotion. If something about this tail was broken or just in a position that would not have been possible in life, that would be an inaccuracy. But just because it's moving in a way that wouldn't have been its, you know, 95% of its day kind of stance, I don't think it's fair to list that kind of thing as inaccurate. And I do still see quite a lot of uh, griping online on message boards and things like that about tripods. And like I said, I'm okay with that. I agree with that if it's just about how common they are and how overplayed they are. But let's not mix up tripods with tail dragging. The tails could touch the ground. They did touch the ground. Probably happened a lot. We don't see it in footprints a lot because they weren't walking around that way. We don't have very many trackways of animals doing other things. Fighting each other, interacting with each other, sitting, standing, looking around. It's mostly just walk across this muddy flat. You're going to keep your tail up for that kind of thing because it's the most efficient mode of locomotion. But that is a little bit skewed um, because it doesn't capture the full range of motion that would have been possible for these animals. So that is your friendly Jurassic Plastic PSA about why tripods are okay as long as you use them sparingly. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, guys.